You're listening to Great Love Media. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am coming to you from lovely Old Town Scottsdale, Arizona. And more specifically, I am at Pod Populi, which is the new retail podcasting element of Great Love Media. We are in the process of opening quite a few uh, brick-and-mortar podcast studios right in the heart of Main Streets where people can watch podcasts, learn podcasts, launch podcasts, we are very pro podcast around here. So uh, they are still installing some of the acoustic treatments in here and the paint is still drying. So if this sounds a little echoey, echo-ish, bear with me. Uh, it's all coming together. Anyway, we've done a bunch of shows this year focusing on exes, uh, mainly because I think exes have played a bit more prominent role this year than in most or many years past. They are reaching out to us. You have had more time to think about them. 2020 made us reevaluate a lot of things as we look forward. And we even did a show called The 11 X's You Date Along the Way. So go back and listen to that one if you want a clear breakdown of your dating past. And, and everyone has them. And they are fun to bitch about and to have regrets over. And they always take up a fraction of your mind and maybe even your time. So those are your exes. But what about their exes? What do you do about the exes of your present partner or your hopeful partner? How big a role should they play? How big a presence should they have in your new fledgling or even ongoing relationship? How relevant are they, healthy or otherwise, in a relationship? So the reason I got to thinking about this was we did one of our global online great love debate shows recently, and it was wild, and you should have been there. If you were not, now you have to wait till 2021 to catch another one. So your loss if you missed out. Uh, and those of you who were present and accounted for in that, it was fun, wasn't it? So anyway, someone asked a question at it that was so odd that it, it got me thinking a bunch. So let me share the question with you guys, and then I'll expand on the broader issue around it uh, a bit. So she asked, and I quote, I'm curious what to do when a man has proposed and seems ecstatic about you as he's totally in love, but he won't tell one of his past girlfriends, now friends that he talks to daily, about you. He says she may kill herself if she finds out, and he's lost several close people in his life recently and isn't willing to lose another. It just feels weird. End quote. So when I got that question the other night, I was like, Jesus, there's a lot to unravel here. Uh, and yes, right off the bat, I know uh, you're thinking exactly what I'm thinking. You're not her shrink. You're not his shrink. What the fuck? Dump him. He proposed and he talks to his ex daily, but not about you. And she may want to die and just what the fuck? I get that. But let me break this down a bit because I think it's a little more complex than just to dismiss it out of hand. So let's start with this. He has an ex he talks to daily. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. It's reasonably common. It can be okay. Lots of people break up because they feel, you know, after a while, more like brother, sister, or best friends than boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife. So it's a transition that can happen. So we're not going to say, oh, no, that's terrible every single time. It can happen. Now, does everyone need to be comfortable with that? No, absolutely not. I've said many times because I believe this, at least for me, the girl I am with has the right to say, I don't like you talking to your exes. Even if my talking to them is fairly benign, I think that whoever I'm with has a right to say that and I have to respect that. If it bothers her, then it's a problem and the present needs to mean more to me than the past. I always respect it if she requests that that contact ends. I'm fine with it. 
that's me. I'm like, okay, the one thing I got to throw out the window is communication with ex-girlfriends. That's not the worst thing in the world. And so if somebody asks me, no problem. See ya, ex-girlfriends. On the flip side, though, you can make the argument that someone who is still on cordial and friendly terms with exes knows how to end things. They weren't that bad of a partner. They didn't piss anybody off. It didn't end in some angry ball of flames and infidelity. And, uh, and it means that they appreciate the relationship that they had, at least at one time. And you should appreciate whatever they learned and grew from that. So that side is reasonable as well. And it, it, it also applies to social media. If a guy you are dating likes every hot picture of his ex, it's probably a problem. If he's friends with her or follows her and simply gives her props for her job promotion posts or birthday shout outs, all good, very reasonable. You need to be okay with that. There's no hard and fast rule. It depends on the two of you and what dynamic you have and what outside influences might impact that. But back to the question that she asked the other night. If he proposes to you, as this guy did, but he still has some twisted emotional connection to someone else, he shouldn't be proposing to you. You shouldn't be accepting his proposal, and I propose the ex goes and gets some help. He, uh, he didn't have a healthy relationship with her before, obviously. The relationship he has with her now is certainly not healthy, and it's not honest. He can't tell his friend about the most important thing in his life, which is you and his relationship with you. That's someone who is comfortable living a lie. You don't want to live with that lie. You don't want to live with him. If she says, or he says, I want you to tell people about us, then they better have an extremely good reason not to if they don't want to or choose not to. And not hurting the feelings of an ex is not one of those good reasons. The ex is in the past. They are gone. You have no more emotional obligation to them, even if they have an emotional attachment to you. And if you do have an emotional obligation to them, then you need to figure out a way to deal with that before you deal with anyone else. Should you be flaunting your new relationship in someone's face? Not necessarily. But that person is in control of what they see. If, if you post pictures of you and your, and your girlfriend um, or boyfriend, your new one, knowing that your ex is going to see them, you're probably fucking with them a little bit. But that person has the right to tune you out and not see it. You know, They need to not be watching if it bothers them. Workplace romances is a little bit of a caveat to that because they tend to really complicate things because you're often forced to have your past in your present and in your presence. So some of that might be a little bit uh, too much in your face. That's unfortunate, and that is sort of an exception to what I'm talking about. Another point about the question, though, is she says he has lost several close people in his life recently which is sad, and my sympathy to him. But that sounds like a traumatic year, and maybe just don't propose during a traumatic year, you know? Clear your head, calm your emotions, and deal with it later. But I'm not here, and this episode isn't about counseling him or even her. I'm here to talk about the place for their exes in your life, not your ex in your life, their ex, your new person's exes in your life. If it feels like there's more than two of you in a relationship, it's a flawed relationship. Uh, I personally have an ex who sometimes gives me legal advice or looks at my contracts because she's a big shot entertainment attorney. And I speak to her probably if I had to judge it, you know, from an, as an outsider, I probably speak to her with a more friendly and comfortable banter than I would a normal attorney, and I understand how that can be bothersome, and it can't be just dismissed as, oh, it's just legal advice. If you're giggling or laughing or telling jokes, it's, it's not just legal advice, and, and I get that, and that's about a comfort level. But my partner has every right to say, find another lawyer. Okay, And I'm fine with that. Some people would take the opposite approach and say, if you love me, part of me is my friends and some of my friends are my exes. I get that. And that isn't my personal uh, viewpoint. That isn't the Brian Howie philosophy. But I understand how some people do feel that way. Every situation is different and every situation requires communication. And 
she will kill herself if she knows about you, that's not communication. That's just a big pile of fucked up. So she needs to extricate herself from this entire thing until he figures out a way to extricate himself from the ex. So what isn't a big pile of fucked up when it comes to exes? I will explain that right after this. All right, so we were just talking uh, about ex-boyfriends and girlfriends, but it's a little bit different when you're talking about ex-husbands and ex-wives and even baby mamas and baby daddies. You want your current partner to have as healthy a relationship as possible and a friendly one because... You know, let's face it, and we've talked about this on the show a bunch of times. Ex spouses almost never get back together. They don't hook up. There's always still a little bit of ick between them, no matter how good things are now. But having them have a healthy and friendly relationship is absolutely so much better for you and your new relationship than having them hate each other or they're in court against each other or they're fighting over money and kids and who wronged who and who did what and all that. You don't want that toxicity from their past in your home. So them being as friendly as possible, I mean... I wouldn't care in the slightest if my girlfriend talked to her ex-husband every day. I mean, there must be a good reason for it. I doubt that reason is, oh my God, we made a huge mistake. Let's get back together. I mean, I highly doubt that's what they're talking about. And if that is the reason that they're talking, well, then them talking is going to expedite, expedite me finding that out. And that's probably a good thing. And I think your partner's exes matter in shaping who your who they are and what they feel, and how they've grown, and what they learn, and how they hurt, and how they've healed, and and all of it. If he can't hear the name Carla because a girl named Carla hurt him, well, Carla is to some degree still in his life. And if she hates all Geminis because Jack was a Gemini, well, Jack is still a part of things, and that's fine. That's expected for everyone unless it affects your life, especially if you're a Gemini or your name is Carla. But back to the healthy relationships and um, and why they can still be a problem and a challenge for a couple that is fairly new or settling into that early um, couplehood. There's a chance that your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, still might have, at least to some degree, a closer bond because of the history with the ex, uh, a closer bond with the ex. They might have better banter. They might have more shared um, stories and experiences. And the more you feel that or are witness to that, the more uncomfortable it can make you. And I get that. Some exes that I've been around, they can still read each other's thoughts and finish each other's sentences They speak in the same cadence. They share the same laugh. They might even say the same, you know, references. And being around that, it's it's not just intimidating. It's a little bit unsettling. And that isn't necessarily about what you have. It's about what they had. And had, H-A-D, is in the past. But that past still seems to have a presence in your presence. So if you noticed it or it happened around you or in front of you and it bothers you, I think you should say how it makes you feel to your partner. And the person needs to respect that and do everything they can to make you feel comfortable with them and with the relationship. And there's even some exes who get around, you know, who might be around for whatever reason if you just ran into them in the street or or you're part of the same social circle that will go out of their way to be like, you know, they were with me first and longer and better than you. Again, that's about that person. Don't worry about that. And you can't blame your partner for that sort of behavior. So let's, so br- let's break down the role the exes play in your life. You got to say, is there a social media connection that makes you feel uncomfortable? Um, I had a girl I used to date like 20 years ago suddenly unfriend me. And 
I asked why. I didn't really care, but I was curious. I was like, did I say something? And she said, no, her boyfriend made her purge her lineup of exes. And she probably had quite a lineup of exes. And that's his right, I think, that um, insecure bastard that he is. 